Okay, look at the side of these buildings. I'm in what you could call the kitchen of Japan. And it's not just that a lot of dishes are from here. This city is home to the DNA of Japanese cuisine. If you have a favorite Japanese dish, chances are Osaka has influenced it in some way. And it's not just street food. All kinds of traditions have their roots here. Basically, this city made Japanese food the way it is today. Remember, Japan is a country that is separated by water and mountains. Yet all of its food ties back to here. And yes, Japan has many unique regional dishes from across the country. But they often use ingredients and flavors developed in Osaka. I explored some of Osaka's most famous dishes and the stories behind them to figure out how this happened. How this city led the formation of one of the most famous cuisines in the world. I'm headed to a small shop in Osaka in the south of the city, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. But this shop is really important, not just to this city, but to Japan, because this shop invented takoyaki. If you don't know, takoyaki is this hot ball of batter stuffed with octopus. It's really, really good. And this shop, Aizuya, is where it all started. The man who opened this shop wasn't from Osaka, by the way. Instead, he was from Fukushima and moved to Osaka since the city was a hub for food. This shop eventually got inspired by several popular dishes at the time, like lajioyaki and akashiyaki, merging them together to create takoyaki. The next dish is another personal favorite, okonomiyaki. It's sort of like a Japanese pancake, but way crazier. Stuffed with meat, cabbage, mayo, and just anything else. So the history of okonomiyaki is more opaque, but this dish was developed in Osaka during around the 1930s, and it became really popular during World War II, actually. Japan was going through food rations at the time, and it was short on rice. Okonomiyaki uses cheap batter and is full of carbs, which made it an affordable and filling alternative. This dish has become so popular, there are now different versions of it across the country, like in Hiroshima and Tokyo. Now, a lot of these dishes are known to be from Osaka. The city has this history of being a merchant town, where people from all over have come here to sell stuff, to eat, to connect. This huge culture of socializing has made Osaka a really unique bubble in Japan. Japan is known for being an introverted country, but Osaka is the complete opposite of that. There's a running gag in this city that if you finger gun someone, they'll pretend to get shot. But this is only one side of the story. There is way more to Osaka than just street food, and you've probably eaten more of it than you thought. Let's start with ramen. While ramen isn't from Osaka, instant ramen is. You see, a lot of Japanese food companies are headquartered in Osaka. Nisin is one of them, and its founder invented the first instant ramen in 1953. Remember, this was post-war Japan, and its economy was booming. People here were spending a lot of time working, so they needed to save what little time they had. Food that was cheap, fast, and storable was becoming more and more prevalent, and instant ramen was just a very natural part of that process. Ramen wasn't the only food affected by this rapid industrialization of food, by the way. Sushi also evolved to become something convenient and cheap. Here it is, Genroku Sushi. It's the very first conveyor belt sushi restaurant in the world. The location isn't the same anymore, but it's still the same chain that started everything. In the 1950s, this guy got inspired by all the automation happening around Japan. And he opened the first Kaiten Sushi restaurant in Higashi, Osaka. The idea was promoted at the World Expo in Osaka in 1970, where it basically exploded around the world and across Japan. Oh, that's actually really good. I've been to Kaiten Sushi before, but this is a lot better. But not all of Osaka's input into Japanese cuisine is modern. Some of them are the very essence of old Japanese traditions, like tea. 
Yeah, Japanese tea culture is also from Osaka. Well, Sakai specifically. Japanese tea culture is largely inspired by China, with some changes to aesthetic and preparation. The culture was mostly developed by this guy, who was from Sakai. This city was where the special tea rooms were designed. Places where you would slowly drink tea sitting down on tatami, and looking out to a garden. Sadly, Sakai doesn't have many remnants of this history, as this sort of space has mostly been preserved in Kyoto instead, but more in Kyoto later. Finally, this last one is more of an ingredient, but it's something that is super prevalent in almost every Japanese dish. Dashi. Dashi is this broth, usually made from boiling kombu. Dashi can be made with a bunch of other bases like fish and kinoko, but kombu is the most iconic one. This broth is really important to Japanese culture. It's basically the DNA of the cuisine. The word umami, which means deliciousness, was coined to describe the flavor of dashi. Even MSG was developed to replicate the taste of dashi. Dashi is used to make miso soup, oyakodan, curry udon, nikujaga, and oden. Even if these dishes aren't from Osaka, they all use this broth developed in the city. Alright, so a lot of food is from Osaka, we get it. But how did this happen? Why is this one city so influential to Japanese cuisine? Well, the answer is this guy, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. So, quick Japan history lesson. This country wasn't always unified. For a long time, this country was divided up into different states that were constantly fighting against each other. This was called the Sengoku period, a time when Japan had no effective leader. Instead, different parts of the country were run by different feudal lords, called daimyos. One of these daimyos, Oda Nobunaga, had the ambitious plan to conquer all of the other states and unify Japan under his control. He did this by using muskets recently brought over by Europeans, something other daimyos in Japan just didn't know how to fight against. Hideyoshi was his right-hand man during all of this. Nobunaga was eventually betrayed and died before he could complete his unification of the country, so his friend Hideyoshi took on his role to complete the unification, and he did this from two places, Kyoto and Osaka. These two cities are right next to each other. To show you how close Kyoto and Osaka are, a train ride only takes 40 minutes, and I'm gonna go to Kyoto. One of the best ways to juxtapose Kyoto from Osaka is just by looking at all the colors and lights in Osaka. Everything is kind of a mess there because it's just this place where ideas are bursting out of the walls. And anything that survives and makes it to Kyoto gets refined into this elegant, minimalist tradition. Kyoto was Japan's capital city, so Hideyoshi made it his main base of operations in the country. But this city is in the mountains. If you haven't noticed, all of the world's most powerful and biggest cities are next to water. If Hideyoshi wanted to project his power in this newly unified country, he needed a place next to water. He needed a place where traders and the money would be. And Osaka was the perfect place. It was right next to Kyoto on a bay that had a lot of shipping routes, and it was surrounded by rivers making it easy to defend. Hideyoshi and Nobunaga noticed this place and how perfect it was pretty early on. If you want to see the influence of Nobunaga and Hideyoshi on this region, look no further than Osaka Castle. As part of their efforts to project their power, they built Osaka Castle and invested a lot into growing the city, to make it the largest economic hub in the country at the time. Since Kyoto was the cultural capital, the city of elites, every major Japanese tradition gravitated towards the city. But because Kyoto was in the mountains, all of that had to channel via here, Osaka. For example, remember how dashi uses kombu? Well, back in the day, kombu came from Hokkaido and would travel down towards Kyoto through Osaka. 
This was called the Kombu Route, and it put Osaka in the spot to develop Kombu into the dashi we have today. This turned Osaka into Japan's kitchen. Every flavor of the country would come through this city, and this city had the money and people to develop those flavors into the cuisine that is so famous today. Another dish is kushiage. Kushiage is this skewer that's deep fried. It can be with meat, vegetables, fish. It's also from the 1930s, like the other two dishes. Specifically from this neighborhood, Shinsakai. This place is a mecca for Osaka food, like fugu and takoyaki. But it's very clear that kushiage is the dominant dish here. Alright, so this is kushiage, or if you're from Osaka, people call it kushikatsu. So let's give it a try. They're very hot inside. Because of Osaka's history, it's the capital of the country's food industry. Almost all of Japan's food companies are here, meaning Japan's innovation will keep on happening here. Yeah, that's cheese on top of egg. Let's try this. Right off the bat, it doesn't work. But history is one thing. What really makes Osaka special is the people. For a country that is known for being cold and introverted, Osaka is the complete opposite. People here love to have fun and crack jokes and make friends. It's an unbelievably warm place, and without a doubt, my favorite city in the entire world. <laughs>